this is Captain Ken Warren at Air Force Atlas II Launch Control at T-minus 32 minutes and counting. Today we'll have the fifth attempt to launch an Air Force Atlas II medium launch vehicle carrying a defense satellite communication system or DISCUS-3 satellite into orbit. The first attempt was postponed because of a power loss at co Launch Complex 36. Technicians isolated the causes of the power loss to a faulty circuit breaker switch and a dead battery in the uninterruptible power supply. Both have been repaired. The second and third attempts were scrubbed due to bad weather. The fourth attempt was postponed primarily due to a faulty inertial navigation unit part called the accelerometer. The uh, INU was replaced and uh, the new unit has been tested and retested and it's working just fine. Today's launch will take place from Launch Complex 36A with the scheduled liftoff time of 5.54 p.m. Eastern Time. The launch window extends from 5.54 to 7.20 p.m. That window is necessary to provide a specific time of perigee insertion. The Atlas II vehicle will rise vertically for the first few seconds after, after launch, and between T plus 2 and T plus 15 seconds, the vehicle will roll from its launch pad alignment of 105 degrees to an initial flight azimuth of 97 degrees. Currently, uh, weather looks really good. There's only about a 5% chance overall throughout the window that weather will be a problem. The primary concern is a slight chance of thunderstorms. At this point in the count, uh, Centaur liquid hydrogen is being topped to flight levels. At this point, all spacecraft and booster systems look very good, and the eastern range is green. Let's hope that uh, Mother Nature continues to cooperate. For those watching the satellite transmission, we have a brief videotape showing today's pre-launch activities. The Air Force Atlas II rocket would have a defense satellite communication system 3 payload is scheduled to lift off, lift off at 5.49 p.m. Eastern Time from Launch Pad 36A here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The $160 million satellite is the second of 10 Discus-3 spacecraft that will be placed into orbit. They are designed to provide high priority worldwide secure voice and data transmission. The DISCUS spacecraft are built to withstand blasts from high altitude nuclear explosions and can change orbital stations to avoid enemy attack. Designed by General Electric, DISCUS-3 has a lifespan of 10 years or greater. Earlier today, the Air Force's Atlas II launch vehicle underwent final preparations for this evening's launch. The Atlas II was procured primarily from General Dynamics to primarily support the DISCUS program and space test program payloads and other medium class payload requirements. The 15-story rocket is a two and a half stage vehicle providing greater propellant capacity than its predecessors. Propulsion is provided by a Rocketdyne liquid rocket set consisting of two booster engines and one sustainer engine. All three engines will fire at liftoff producing 488,000 pounds of thrust. The upper Centaur two stage is a three foot stretch of the previous configuration. It is powered by two Pratt and Whitney liquid rocket engines developing 16,500 pounds of thrust each. Systems at Launch Complex 36 were refurbished and reactivated for the Atlas II and the launch pad 36A has been modified to accommodate the lengthening of the new booster. Centaur spacecraft to arm, FTS arm. Minus 100 seconds. Minus 90 seconds. Returning LH2 tanking. Roger. Range launch clearance. Go. Stable step three. Ignition enable switch closed. Closed. 75 seconds. Securing Centaur rocks tapping. Roger. We're about a minute away from launch. 97. And so far everything looks good. Switch controlled by uh, auto arm. Auto arm. 65. Engines ready. Five seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Centaur. Pneumatics. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Minus 40. Launch sequence. T minus 30. 30. SCU arm. Vent valves closed. T minus 20. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and liftoff. The Air Force's second Atlas II Discus III mission is underway. Boy, what a pretty sight. Indeed, Central Florida is a bird watcher's paradise. About 30 seconds into the flight and everything looks great. Everything continues to look good as we head towards spacecraft separation will, will occur in about 29 minutes. over here in the Mission Director Center. And it's going right down the middle of its projected flight path. Right down the middle. Processing data from Jonathan Dickinson. Data remains excellent. Tonight's exact launch time was 554.01 Eastern quiet. Time. Very quiet. Once quiet. again, tonight's exact launch time was 554 p.m. Eastern Time. The main voice you'll hear now through separation is that of Skip Mackey reporting from the telemetry lab. The uh, hydrogen pyro valve has been fired and the response is proper. The Arkham uh, was fired and uh, in its test and worked well. We have booster, booster engine shut down, shut down with clean. We have booster jettison and sustainer remains looking good. Booster jettison and it looks great. Atlas PUs back in control again. Everything looks good there. Flying jettison. Flying jettison look clean. Both halves came off very nicely. You could even see it in the video. Attitude disturbance is very light. Skip Mackey confirming uh, payload fairing Stand separation. continues to burn well. Okay, we have sustainable engine shutdown. Seco has occurred. We have sent our separation from the Atlas. We have pre-starts. Okay, we have Orion data. Spacecraft separation, both separation. Yeah, there we have it, spacecraft separation. You can hear the excitement in the mission director center. As everybody uh, has acknowledged the fact that we have had successful spacecraft separation. With successful spacecraft separation, everything appears to have gone well on this mission. Booster engine cutoff and booster package jettisoned. Payload fairing jettisoned. Sustainer engine cuts off and Atlas separates from Centaur. Centaur spins up to four RPMs and separates from the discus and IABS. Discus IAB spins up to 28 RPMs. IAB's main engines burn to near geosynchronous orbit. D-spin and separate discus from IABS. Solar arrays deploy. And sun acquired. Acquire Earth. Deploy gimbal dish antenna. 
begin 53-day test and calibration period. 